I see filling ranks, which is unusual for math. Um, I am very pleased to see that so many of you came to actually hear something about math. When I started out, you know, uh, learning about math, um, I didn't really have a plan. Like, I was, like, it, as we heard in the, in the talk before, from the surfer, you know, like a surfer, but I didn't have like a clear vision where I want to go. I was more like trying to not fall off the board. <laughs> and uh, so even though I, I am now like studying my math degree in Germany, currently, do, currently doing my master's and my bachelor's degree in philosophy, um, from like before I started, before I started studying, this uh, didn't came to my mind. When I started out, um, I didn't really know what to do, which path to take. So uh, maybe you, some of you can relate. Who, who of you knows exactly what they want to do after they finish school? Quien sabe exactamente qué quiere hacer después del colegio? O lo sabía después de terminarlo? Yeah, and like how to approach this question, right? Like when you start, do you study the same as your parents? Do you study the same as your, as your friends? Do you look out what interests you the most or maybe what you were best at, at school? Any of these ways can be valid. But it's important to keep in mind that your decision doesn't have to be cast in stone. You find out what fits you best when you start doing it. Many of you like, who already have had their career might know this. They wanted to start with one thing and ended up with another. They, that, that just fitted better. OK. So in my case, as you can guess from my field studies, uh, study fields, I'm not the most practical person. I knew like, the most important thing for me was my interest in philosophy. But as I knew this was a sure way to be a taxista, I said, yeah, maybe I study something that could, I can use in a job and do what interests me in my free time as a hobby. But did I know what I wanted to work as? Not really. So I needed something that was so general that I could procrastinate and postpone this decision so I could decide later what I want to work as. I somehow knew that I wanted to delve into science somehow or work in the technical direction. So I chose math, thinking that whichever way I go, it would be, would be useful in any case because it's the field that unites the sciences. Who of you thinks that, as a short reality check, who of you thinks that the math you learned at school is actually applicable in any job? Like the stuff you learned at data school years, do you think you can use it? Levanta la mano, quien sabe, quien piensa que puede usar la matemática que aprendió en el colegio para la vida cotidiana o para un trabajo. Especialmente en los años más, más tardes. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't that smart of me, right? <laughs> Choosing that as a, so, okay. So, uh, this was like, like, school is already bad. Like, to be fair, math, uh, school math is, is, uh, is not compute, completely useless, but it's just difficult to find a direct application of the actual content that it teaches. In university, this gets worse. Like, unless you really want to de develop a new product or like do research, you will never ever going to need the stuff you learn. Uh, so halfway into my studies, in my fourth semester, more or less, the illusion was gone that I could actually use the stuff I learned in whatever work I choose. So what about the other point then? That maybe if I start with math, I can maybe, you know, get into the other sciences. While this was more true than my first assumption, it was still a bit off. It turned out when I started 
learning more about IT from my, from my work, which I currently have, that if you really want to delve into other sciences and really want to learn deeply about them, you should start studying them right away. Because clearly stuff gets easier if you know math, because a lot of parts in other natural sciences is math, but there's still so much to learn that you won't really have that much time. Unless you want to study like until 30 or so and do two degrees. But still you're kind of, kind of forced to, right? Because as I, as I said, math is not really applicable to any job. You need to learn something that you can actually work with. So you're kind of forced to take a hobby or like a side work or another field of study that you can apply at a job. So, of course, I took the wise decision to study philosophy. So, it doesn't look that bright for math so far, right? But uh, I'm still studying for my master's and I did finish my degree. So, the, re uh, the question is why? What reason to keep on going with a rather difficult field of study with no apparent use? Well, there are several reasons, but I'll focus on one I find particularly important. And this is teamwork, which is surprising, right? Because what would you imagine a mathematician's life to be like? Like, does he sit alone in his office, scribbling difficult and unintelligible formulas at his blackboard, drinking his coffee in solitude, and being the nerdy nerd that he or she is, barely speaking to other people, and if they do, doing it rather awkward, like me. Uh, this might be true for like a few, but for most it isn't. Math, as it turns out, is a team sport, and most of the work you'll do, you'll be doing with a group, with at least one or more partners. So instead of like sitting alone, you scribble difficult and unintelligible formulas at the blackboard together. You drink your coffee together. And you try to speak to other people awkwardly about your field of study together. Um, like in my experience, when I was back, back at the university, when we were studying, we were sitting together in the library like up to 11 at night to try and solve our theorems on our exercise sheets, this is basically our homework, which you have like every week. So, and we weren't like the crazy ones, like the, the super nerds. This was rather common, like everyone was sitting together up late night and trying to solve their stuff. Um, and it's obviously a lot more fun this way too, because yeah, alone over friends, yeah. So, um, we was, we were sitting together and uh, talking with other people as well, like from other fields of sciences. I have, from, I have a few from IT and physics and chemistry. They basically, basically told me the same. Like other scientific fields also like teamwork. You'll never work alone. And this has, especially in math, two very important reasons. The first one is that you have different ways to approach a problem, right? So, for example, different specializations you have in math, like you can approach a problem with algebra or with analytics or maybe geometry. So there are different ways you can solve a problem, but not just that, like everyone has their own idiosyncratic way of thinking about problems and furthermore, you won't always get all the stuff at the university because there is a lot to learn. Like the lectures are packed. There's really dense and you really have to listen. And there's so much said that you can, can't really understand everything at once. And additionally, like the stuff you learn at the lectures is, more, is only a part of all the things you need to know for your field of study to actually yeah, pass the exam. So friends, they really take you out of the bubble, like they bring their fresh way. For example, if you take the problem of squaring a circle, 
which is like finding a, a square which is equal uh, of equal uh, fläche yeah. as the circle. <laughs> um, this was like tried geometrically for like 2,500 years, but I didn't find a solution. Up until like 60 years ago or something, someone tried it with algebra, which was recently invented, and they solved it, like a 2,500 year old problem just solved by trying an, another approach. And more importantly, like, which is way more common, you see the lectures, you, you, like, you don't get something, and the other people, they, they, they understood it and they explained it to you, and this is like how you, how you share your experience. This is like one important point, but the most important, more important point is that math is really, really, really tough. You basically feel so stupid, more stupid than everyone else. You feel like you should have studied a whole other field, that this is just not for you, that uh, in the end, like, you've, you'll fail your degree and all your years of work will, will have been for nothing. So you often have these very, very dark thoughts. And why is that? Because when you go to the lectures, uh, when you go to like, the practice lessons with other students, like, someone is presenting a solution class, they, like, the presentation lasts half an hour. They explain it in half an hour, like, a, like a, an exercise. But they prepare for it like six hours at least. So you sit there, you feel, he's like going about it easier. Yeah, okay, this is because this and this, and this works out well. And you're sitting there like, this doesn't make any sense to me. But of course it doesn't, because the other person prepared six hours to understand it, and you will have like half an hour to listen to it. This is the same in the lectures. The profs, professors, they, they, uh, they prepare a lot longer for the, lect for the lecture than the lecture actually lasts. And they are the professors, they already know this stuff. So, okay, what to do? You have to sit, you have to go out and work with the other people. You have to sit together with them and you have to see them work. Why? Because you see like this whole process of finding the solution takes longer. You're not the slow one, everyone is struggling. So like they tell you, like if you say, ah, I feel so stupid, I don't get the solution. And they say, ah, I don't either. But just telling you doesn't, just then doesn't cut it. You have to see it, that I actually can't get to the solution, that it takes longer. But also sharing your doubts, like telling them, ah, I feel bad this semester, I somehow don't get it. And, and they say, ah, ah, I don't understand this lecture either. And this just sharing your thoughts. So, and how does all of this translate to real life? Because as I said, I somehow have to, uh, uses in a job, right? So someday I have to work. I already do, but what does it serve me in my job? Okay, the first thing we said was that the other people bring their ideas and their different ways of thinking. So what's the difficult part? What's to learn? Well, if someone, if another person is telling you something, you first have to listen. You have to listen to what they say. And especially if you work in a very complex job, listening to another person or to like a customer explaining their problem can take hours. And you have to listen carefully. And listening just doesn't mean sitting there, but it does mean sitting there and thinking what they are saying. So in, at our university, it's quite common. Like you sit in the, in the math edificio and just someone randomly comes up to you and ask, what are you doing? And they just sit down, they, will, they have other stuff to do, but they sit down for you, one and a half hour, listen to your problem, and try to solve it with you. Like, they don't get anything in return, but they still do. This is like, imagine having a colleague like that, who just comes up to you, see, sees you struggling, and sits down for hours, and really listens to you and thinks, what, what can I do to help you? This is the first thing. But the second, and the second thing we said, uh, second point was, we have to share our thoughts. We often feel like without motivation, we feel lackluster. 
So, and in the pandemic, this was even worse. Like every one of us could experience this. We were in the pandemic alone. And this was like, you don't really have that much energy to work. You felt lonely and alone, maybe. So this experience of sharing your doubts and not being too hard on yourself, this is one of the most important things I think I have learned in math. And for these reasons, I think it, was, it is worth studying it. Thank you.